It seems like Halloween gets earlier every year, though it only really starts to feel like it when you see the Coca-Cola hearse. And what better time to march around the room, eyes black as coal, chanting Alistair Crowley's name to the tune of Have a Banana. Alistair Crowley! While our most glorious festival may be culturally bigger in the UK than ever, the golden age of Halloween television is long gone. These days you're lucky to get a post-midnight showing of Scary Movie 4, but back in the day, it's like they let Pazuzu edit the Radio Times. We're going to be looking at three such specials, starting with 2001's Ghost Watch Live. This early televised ghost hunt is unrelated to the actual Ghost Watch, and surely attempting to capitalise on that infamous name. How much of its audience was owed to those waiting for a rug pull which never came? A pre-broadcast press release even specified, Ghost Watch Live is a credible exploration of the subject, and not a Halloween spoof event. The show itself was part of a themed weekend of ghoulish content on now defunct satellite channel UK Horizons. Throughout the weekend, join the most famous Doctor Who of them all, Tom Baker, travelling to haunted locations around Britain, not a Dalek, but an altogether trickier customer, a poltergeist. Ghost Detectives with Tom Baker looks like the greatest series ever. And it is available on DVD, so maybe next year? Where Ghost Watch Live takes its place in history is as perhaps the first real live ghost hunt. Kind of. We all know Most Haunted is king of the format and set the model for everything that followed. Green tinted night vision, people going, did you hear that? And yearly live shows every Halloween. But Ghost Watch Live predates Most Haunted's first episode by a full seven months, and comes a year to the day before the first live show. Incidentally, if you want my full take on Most Haunted and Derek Akora, check out my book, Smoke and Mirrors and Steven Seagal, which is linked in the description. Ghost Watch Live was simulcast on UK Horizons and the Beebs International stations, BBC Prime and BBC America, promoted as an interactive cross-media investigation, which in 2001 meant that it had a website. The 60-minute show was followed by two nights of seven-hour online streams from webcams pointed at haunted rooms. And remember that when we finish this live show tonight on UK Horizons at 1am, we will be carrying on this experiment streamed yeah. direct to your PC, to your desktop as they say, uh, on the internet at uh, www.ukhorizons.tv. Do you believe in life after death? I'm Paul Darren, and you might just be watching... TV history in the making. Afraid of the dark, you will be tonight. Our hosts will be familiar from Blake 7 and Babylon 5. It is almost midnight, the witching hour. Already there have been signs of something inexplicable. Hi there, I'm Claudia Christian. And I am Paul Darrow. Don't know if she's done much presenting work. Over the next two nights, not only can you watch our intrepid ghost detective stream live and direct to your... Over the next two nights, not only can you watch our intrepid ghost detective stream live and direct to your desktop, you can even join in the guest hunt. In this pair, we've got a duo who make Mick Fleetwood and Samantha Fox look like Anne and Nick, and one wonders if the producer was a sci-fi fan who simply hired the actor he most admired and the actress he most fancied. So prepare yourself for a ghost watch. Both bored and confused, 
Paul's presenting style suggests he was minding his own business when men in balaclavas bundled him into a van, only pulling the pillowcase off his head five seconds before someone called action. Now, uh, I'm joined here by the Honourable Jonathan Montague. Jonathan is not only Jonathan's the son of car-obsessed Lord Bewley, and he's being sent off to the bloody tower. Do you I'm, believe in ghosts? I don't at the moment. All right. Andrew Lancelot Corrie's there too. May I just ask you point blank, do you believe in the paranormal? Do you believe in ghosts? Do you believe in uh, entities, Without spirits? reserve or hesitation. <laughs> I, I saw uh, smoke coming out of chimneys that haven't been lit in hundreds of years. Really? Now, they keep telling us things like... You might just be watching television history in the making. But a third of the way in, it's just been people chatting on benches. All costs, actually, uh, the cost of the calls are what, 10p? 10p. Right, 10p. <laughs> less than 10p. 10p, yeah. The millennium era tech, sat in the awkward bridge between analogue and digital, brings to mind hauntological classic, the stone tape. And this is firmly the era of the internet being described as the world wide web really excellent and up-to-date, state-of-the-art, infrared webcams. <laughs> but for us telly viewers, I hope you like listening to Paranormal Investigators. Now, right now, I'm joined here by Paranormal Investigators Ross Hemsworth and Andy Mathers. Matthews. Ma oh, right. <laughs> so, gentlemen, what has been going on tonight? <laughs> My goodness, some exciting things! We've been here, we've been here rather about an hour and a half, and already um, we have at least 25 pictures of these so-called orbs. Orbs were the big thing in early noughties ghost hunting, when digital photography was a new medium, and they'd yet to figure out it was just how dust reacted to flashes on a JPEG. Everyone got hung up on this for years. Oh, another filthy basement filled with ghosts. I can't believe it. What we're actually seeing, what we're actually picking up on a digital camera is... Dust, mate. Which was absolutely amazing because Andy, we nicknamed the orb catcher in the team. I had an old workmate with that nickname. He had to sign the register for 10 years. I'm sure we'll get to the hunting soon. But first, ghost stories from a beef eater. The hiss of the gas fire in the hearth of the fire changed to the crackle of a wooden fire. You are becoming quite startled, as these men were not wearing modern clothes. On the litter laid a body, a body that had been decapitated. Was he seeing the past, or was the past seeing the future? And we're sat outside again. The uh, fear and threat and apprehension is around the unknown in this uh, darkened landscape. Uh, of shadow and light. Um, so, uh, do you believe in ghosts? I don't actually, not at all, no. I'm with you, Doctor. <laughs> Finally, we join Claudia in the production hub to check in on Jonathan's ghost hunt in Walter Raleigh's studio. Jonathan, are you there? Hello. Yes, he sat in a swivel chair, but it still counts. Right, I was incorrect in that, I apologise. I'm looking at you right now, actually. I... When they cut back to him later, he's reading a book. But just as it seems they're actually looking for ghosts and not just talking about it, they wheel out the producer for a chin wag. All right, Andrew, now tell us why this event is unique. Well, Paul, never before on live TV have loads of people in black pleather jackets talked to each other sat on benches outside. Or indeed, standing up as we are now. It's a television first. Uh, we, we've actually got uh, the uh, Thomas More sale. Again, locations which the public can't access. Location, location, location. Fuck it, let's have a chat with another psychic researcher. That's correct. That's correct, okay. Yes, but you are ago. also, you're also a writer. Is that correct? Actually, no. More of a producer. More of a producer. Mm -hmm. Okay. He heard some sounds once, coming out of a locked church. 
Well, there was footsteps, um, a dragging sound of something, so who Not knows chains. what it was. <laughs> wasn't chains, it sounded worryingly <laughs> like just a... chains. <laughs> It sounded worryingly like a coffin. So like a coffin? Oh, well, that's, that's, that's even worse. That's a bit, bit bad, yeah. And had a lumpy flesh or nothing Absolutely. like that. Absolutely. Uh... <laughs> I don't think we can go into that right now. <laughs> Excellent. I'm glad to have okay. you. Thank you. Hi. Thank you, Tom. Dominic. Now, uh, what am I going to ask you? Oh, I know. <laughs> Tell us about the web. Perhaps it's ghosts causing all these technical problems. Dominic, you got anything more to say? Well, uh, we've we'll seen... Not all ghost stories at the Tower of London concern human spirits. The only story that I personally know that concerns somebody dying by meeting a ghost in the Tower. I can watch it when it comes up. Hi there, and you're watching Ghost Watch Live. Um, <laughs> his name is Ross. And I believe he'll be joining us momentarily. Actually, we're going to go for a break before that. Uh, he's a little bit indisposed at the moment. But... Welcome back to Ghost Watch Live. Thank you for joining us. I'm here with Ross and Andy. And Ross, I have a question for you first. Explain to me exactly... Ah, Jonathan's back. Maybe he saw something. Maybe that's maybe some people have a gift that I don't, but I certainly didn't experience anything. And follow us all through the night on the web. Uh, the URL on your screen. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. I'm standing here. No, actually, I'm sitting here with. <laughs> it's not going well, is it? If you want to make it in this business, you'd better pull your socks up. Not like. Oh, forget it. It's a shame Claudia's wasting her time here as the obvious natural successor to David Frost. Now let me let me ask you this. Okay? Yeah. This is your question. What is the difference between a ghost hunt mm -hmm. and a ghost investigation? Well, oh, that was different. a good one. That's a bit of aura. Thank you. <laughs> Are we going to get into electric magnetic fields and that sort of thing? Because I know that people's watches have stopped and clocks have been affected and, and things like that on electric electrical magnetic fields that, which also are concurrently quite often running with time lines so perhaps time gates let's use that well, phraseology well, well, the whole gang comes out at the end like a royal variety if every act was a bloke with gel in his hair who'd never seen a ghost but definitely felt a presence once well i'm excited to get on with all the experiments so am i and uh so we uh, guys Note that there are three minutes left in the broadcast, so if you want to know whether or not they proved the existence of the afterlife, just use your nearest time gate back to 2001 and look at their webcams. Though unbelievably inept and lacking in any content, Ghost Watch Live was a formative show for the genre. Missing crucial elements, like night vision, presenters who could speak, and doing an actual ghost hunt. It's possible Yvette Fielding was watching and thought, what if someone did this properly? So don't forget to actually email us questions. Watch the webcams on the web, so ghost at ghostwatch.com. Ghostwatchlive.com. Ghostwatchlive.com. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for joining us. Thank you. Well, Keep thank watching. You. Yeah. Stand by, <laughs> Web Studio. We're coming to you live in 35 seconds. Five, four, three, two... One. Our next treat begins with the decapitation of Frank Butcher. I see you in a second because I've got to get this head back on my neck and I what's a wally? Mike Reeds are always an odd choice as children's presenter, but never more so than with Runaround. It's like someone took all the sights and smells of 1970s pubs and magic them down into humanoid form. Hairy forearms, signet rings, skin like a leather handbag and laugh like a knuckle duster. The cheery script is snarled through gritted teeth, with every word out of his mouth sounding like a threat. <laughs> the image quality here is terrible, but Runaround's Halloween special of 1981 deserves a watch. Oh, that is it, because I've got my head screwed up. 
He ain't there, is he? Game of run around. Let's play the game. What a the studio's decorated, and all the kids are in the spirit of the season. We start with Sally. She collects stamps and has over 2,000. She also likes horse riding. Gavin supports Southampton football team and goes cycle scrambling. Jackie's spare time is spent collecting coins and watching television. And Andy has a collection of 35 badges. How the game's played is, contestants are given multiple choice questions and run around to the one they think is correct, wherein Mike says go in a funny way. You got it! He's fell over. He's only been in there about two years. Come on, darling, because that's the end of the game. Now, back there, over there, baby. There's a good girl. Prizes include a vinyl soundtrack for The Shining, a film none of them are old enough to see. That whole bit inappropriate for kids is Runaround's entire raison d'etre, like a segment with a lady from the London Dungeon. What's this first one here, love? Um, that's a medieval torture instrument called Scavenger's Daughter, which was used on uh, religious heretics. Lovely. Who was the last king to be executed in this country? What a wonderful kids' program. <laughs> <laughs> Was right that time. What a load of wallets. But here's the reason for its inclusion. Forget Oldman, Lugosi and Christopher Lee. This is my Dracula. <laughs> While always lovely to see Charles Hawtrey, this is a rather sad sight as I think he's been at more than just the blood. And who's oh, that? hello. <laughs> <laughs> right. Perhaps you'd read the question. Are you listening to this, kid? I'll read the question. What we want you're to know is... You're assuming I can read. Indeed I am. Indeed As I a matter of fact, you're right, I can read. Now, boys and girls, will you say yes, I'm here? Boys and girls. Yes, I'm here. Right. Uh, question. Where does Dracula come from? Is it from... Transitania, that's question number one. Answer what? Does it come from Transylvania? Why, have you noticed I can pronounce it? Um, answer three, no, question three. But even well into his cups, Hawtrey as Lord of the Undead is a nice companion piece to carry on screaming. A go, a go, a go! Charles Hawtrey, dear boy, or Count it's Dracula. Lovely. Can I have the next dance? Yes, indeed, you can. Right, the Quaker Wars. Nice round of applause, Ooh. Mr. Charles, a Dracula, Hawtrey, lovely, right. And I reckon Mike Reed and Mr. T would have got on like a house on fire. See you soon, kids. Look after Mum. Tell our boys and girls. As we saw earlier, live television flirts with the danger of something going wrong. This was harnessed by our final special, the Paul Daniels Magic Show from Halloween night 1987. A Saturday evening preceded by Telly Addicts, Rolf's Cartoon Club and the Russ Abbott Show. An ominous beginning clues you in that something's up. Tonight it's Halloween when strange things can happen, and even here, live on BBC One, all is not what it seems. Remember his normal title sequence. Are you going to like this? Going to like it? Not a lot. Not a lot. You're going to be delighted? Get excited? Maybe, but not a lot. Well, for the devil's birthday. This is a masterclass in setting a tone, with a carriage on a misty night and Daniels emerging like Nosferatu 
to approach a satanic altar. What's he balancing her on? Dirty Daniels. Inside for a special Halloween party, as always when Telly meddles with the dark arts, it's a very sombre atmosphere. We're here because this is Halloween, this is a live show, and we may later investigate the possibility of the ghost that's supposed to walk through these marble halls. And in here, as you can see, our party is already in full swing. Viscountess, uh, chief superintendent of the uh, Surrey Police Force. Paul, of course, invokes the name Houdini. And he, uh, and he died on Debbie's birthday, which is today. Happy birthday, Debbie. But even all the brilliant Halloween bants about Victorian mediums get turned into fucking not magic. Like if you showed up at one of Crowley's orgies and had barely taken it out before he started doing the Chinese linking rings. Uh, uh, really, oh, that's okay, really tight, that's okay, yeah. Yeah, that's all right, that's, that's, that's well done. <laughs> Guest magician is Eugene Berger with his Spirit Theatre. Nice Yellow cotton thread. The dramatic lengths magicians will go to to distract from another bloody trick where string gets put back together. And then, at the end of time, the god Shiva appears and dances a weird and terrible dance of fire. And the universe is no more. There is only silence, vast cosmic sleep. Your little thread in one piece again, is it? This is the spirit's cabinet. Looks like Mike McShane's sweat rag to me. Dracula and the college girls. A trick where Paul tries to catch a ghost on film really has got everything. And there's another of the ways that this shows a precursor to the actual ghost watch. Look at the gorgeous clunky old tech, which a lady from Panasonic promises has not been fiddled with. And her name is Melanie. Give her a nice round of applause. Melanie, she comes over. Melanie Reipert. 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 Okay, Melanie Reipert. Now I'm right, aren't I? You can't dub on this equipment. You're absolutely right. It's just simple. Yeah. Yes. Melanie Reipert. Definitely not a name made up in a panic while she was looking at the floor. Would you like to, to trick the ghost into appearing, Daniels has the clock fast forwarded to midnight when the wraiths come out for a ramble, while we're all reminded how ancient we are. And then you press record and play at the same time. And now we just wait for midnight to chime up. Debbie's giving me... Oh! Now, let's see if we get a presence here. Oh. Oh. We had something smashed. I didn't realise this ghost was a poltergeist, you know. We had an experience. I don't know whether you felt it. I felt a little cold, chill, but not... As I always say, not a lot. He gets a lot of shit, but look at the way Paul sells this as they check the tape. A sensational bit of business. Approximately. Grandfather clocks are notoriously unreliable. Now, let's see if we get a presence here. Oh. Look. Oh. <laughs> look at that. I hope, they don't, uh, I hope they don't take that out of my money. Um, we have the curator with us. Did you tonight, see that? And, uh, <laughs> I never saw it. It was on there, though, wasn't it? Feel anything strange at all? Um, would you like to come round again? I don't want to touch anything. No. The whole thing's really effective, live, and at a time televised ghost hunts did not exist. Genuinely, still considered too dangerous and occult for broadcast. For the grand finale, everyone's led down to a gothic dungeon. Daniel's flanked by druids like the Undertaker at WrestleMania. 
Harry Houdini would have loved this. This is an Iron Maiden. Now this is very dangerous. If anyone at home is of a nervous disposition, I have to warn you, this can go wrong. That is not a joke. Switch off if you are of a nervous disposition, pregnant, that kind of thing. The spikes themselves, there's 110 of them, and they're all metal. Okay? Like his hero Houdini, he's doing a big escape, and his warnings are a veritable Chekhov's armory of bad tidings. And if you could take the tie, Debbie, and I want you to leave the room completely. Can I just say now, ladies and gentlemen, I really mean it. It can go wrong, so we have people here from all walks of life. If anything at all goes wrong, don't move from your seats unless ordered to do so. I have to make this announcement. The BBC staff here are all on standby. They have been trained. They know what to do should it go wrong. And there's no blame attached to any of them. Essentially, he has to get out before enough ball bearings roll down that chute to set off the switch that slams the spike shut. But it's just magic. Magic never goes wrong, even on live telly. Show him how it's done, Daniels. Would you close that now? Don't move forward, anyone. See, he's almost out. Ladies and gentlemen, please leave the room in an orderly fashion. Everyone knows. If the credits are silent, then it's real. Good night, sweet goblin. But hold your horses, as Paul Daniels invented the post credits scene. Well, what you have just been watching was a live magic show. But this outside here was recorded yesterday. And all I can say is, I hope that the last illusion goes well tomorrow. What always stuck with me was the confused reaction of the monk. The following Monday at school, I asked someone in the playground, see that Paul Daniels thing? Rubbish, weren't it? Oh, I didn't fall for it. Truthfully, faced with the notion I'd just witnessed the widowing of Debbie McGee, I had immediately burst into tears. According to Paul's autobiography, only close members of the production team had been clued in, plus the cameramen so they wouldn't freak out and ruin the shot. Though it had been the BBC who'd suggested a War of the Worlds type hoax, Paul got a dressing down over tricking viewers into thinking they'd seen a snuff film. He claims to have gone into the meeting with a briefcase containing his contract, and offering to tear it up if they weren't happy. Paul would bite back with a letter to the Times newspaper, suggesting that actual bad taste magic would, quote, be doing a crucifix escape on an Easter show, end quote, and noting that, out of millions and millions of viewers, the BBC switchboard only had hundreds of calls. You couldn't get away with something like this now without a massive scandal, as modern viewers hate nothing more than feeling like they've been conned. Since the Ant and Deck phone scandal, there's a cry of fix at every reality show vote off, with papers stirring up false outrage from something one person with three followers said on Twitter. Faking your own death on air would bring down a whole network. Ironically, though Ghostwatch is the standard bearer, it's also the thing which effectively killed Halloween night programming in Britain, as no channel wanted to deal with that kind of fallout. Other than Inside Number 9's brilliant live show, which harked back to the wall-breaking specials of old, 
and went out on October the 28th until we get a goth prime minister. Think yourselves lucky to have a one show segment about pumpkin soup. Right then, everyone ready? Yes, sir, it's Halloween, Alistair Crowley, madam, it's Halloween, Alistair Crowley. Right, now I want to hear everybody joining in, so raise a glass of your finest cum to the Dark Lord, nice and loud, here we go. Yes, mate, it's Halloween, Alistair Crowley, we all love Halloween, Alistair Crowley. Carve your sigil on the floor, cause Satan's knocking at the door. Yes, now, it's Halloween. Yes, sir, it's Halloween. Alistair Crowley, madam, it's Halloween. Alistair Crowley.